UK's leading retail payments authority, Pay.UK, currently enables £19.2 billion in payments every single day. It runs the country's retail payments operations, which include backs, faster payments and checks. Now, Pay.UK has coordinated all retail payment operations to provide a more aligned and simpler operation for the whole of the United Kingdom. It's also responsible for modernising the retail payments architecture called the New Payments Architecture, or the NPA. It believes there's a once-in-a-generation opportunity to work with colleagues to shape payments for the future as it delivers the New Payments Architecture. And to look at this in more detail, I'm delighted to say that we are joined by Matthew Hunt, who's the Chief Operating Officer at Pay.UK. So welcome to Cyboss TV, Matthew. Welcome, Matthew. Now, for those who haven't come across Pay.UK just yet, who are you and uh, and as you do seem quite new when did you start operating we're about delivering services to the end user so let me explain who we are from the end user perspective there's basically two main ways in the United Kingdom to get money from one bank account to another the first one that comes to everyone's mind is cards which we clearly use in shops and online all the time uh, the second one is called the interbank set of payment systems and that's what pay.uk does and those are things we use every day as well. For example, if your salary is paid by direct debit, if you use standing orders, if you make internet banking transfers, all those types of transactions go across our rails. So that's what Pay.UK does. We've been around since uh, the spring of 2018 when we took control of the three existing uh, interbank payment schemes, which are called BACs, Faster Payments and Checks. That came about uh, as a result of something called the Payment Strategy Forum that was set up by the then new payment systems regulator. What that forum did is it set an ambitious change agenda for retail payments and it identified whilst the previous companies were doing a great job delivering their services in BAU, the strategic challenge that the Payment Strategy Forum gave to the industry could only be delivered by one United company. So Pay.UK was given the job of bringing those three schemes together. Of course, the other big innovation, which I know we're going to come on to because you just mentioned, is the NPA. That was the second big thing that the Payment Strategy Forum gave us to do. OK, which leads quite nicely to my next question, which, of course, is about the, the NPA. Because, look, it's a major piece of work. So how is it going to transform the UK payments landscape? And what's your role within that framework? So. Um, I think there's a really key point I want to make around the NPA, and that is the difference between a system and an ecosystem. The NPA, as conceived by the Payment Strategy Forum, was about a wide ecosystem of retail payments, and we play a very particular role within that. So let me unpack that, because this, this ecosystem is happening already. It's happening today. So in the wider ecosystem, for example, with the faster payment scheme today, you might have uh, a member, a participant that specializes in foreign exchange payments. They're offering all sorts of value-add services to customers on foreign exchange, but the sterling leg of those foreign exchange payments is coming through our systems in Pay.UK today. The idea behind the NPA is that we further um, enhance that ecosystem to provide real benefits uh, to consumers. Let me come on to our role in that ecosystem. The Payment Strategy Forum envisaged that we play the key role in that ecosystem by underpinning it, by providing a clearing and settlement infrastructure that all the payments will settle across. And this is what we mean when we keep talking about the rails. Yeah, so it's, it's more efficiency, basically. This is what it boils down to. I think that's right. And this was efficiency was the key reason why I think uh, the Payment Strategy Forum identified that one company rather than three mm. was the right way forward. There's a That's big strategy to deliver here and a joined up single mm. retail payments authority is able to deliver that strategy. Yeah. You mentioned Pay.UK enabling innovation and creating rules and standards. Do the two work together? I think it's it's vital that they do work together. And I've got some, it's, it's probably best illustrated by a couple of examples. So um, some really good examples of how we've, we've brought rules and standards and innovation together is around two new offerings called confirmation of payee and request to pay. Now what both of those have in common 
is that we are not building a big monolithic central infrastructure for those. Those are what we call overlay services. Now, let me explain that a bit further. Our role in those overlay services is to provide a standard by which payment messages can be transferred around the ecosystem and that private sector competitive members of that ecosystem can build services that meet that standard to the benefit of end users. You were alluding there to end user focus and, and the innovation agenda, and you mentioned that Pay.UK also has a role maintaining robustness and resilience. So what steps are you taking to ensure that the NPA is also robust and resilient, equally important? Uh, even more important, uh, Julia, it actually says in the law book of the UK, the statute book, that robustness and resilience is our most important objective. We firmly believe that, and the phrase we use is that robustness and resilience is the platform on which uh, our future innovations will be built. So we're really focused uh, in the NPA of making sure we procure a robust and resilient platform. But there's an interesting concept we've been working on with our regulators, including the Bank of England, that I wanted to talk about quickly. And that's the concept of something called impact tolerance. What that basically says is, you can't build an IT system that will never, ever go wrong. Things will happen from time to time. So the prize here is about mitig mitigating the impact on end users when things do go wrong to make sure that people can still live their lives, still make their payments, and that everyone's life goes on. Uh, unfortunately, we had an incident in our faster payment system last July where that was down for four hours on a Sunday afternoon. And we applied those principles of impact tolerance then. We bought it back quickly. We spent a lot of time working with our participants to communicate with the customers. And the key message was given to them that customers would not be out of pocket as a result of any delays. The industry would pick that up. So this point about impact tolerance is really key for the whole industry going forward. You talk about services people can absolutely depend on. What are the projected benefits, really, to them of the, of the MPA? So I think with the MPA, the benefits accrue in three main areas. Um, the first is a new global standard, which for geeks in the room is known as the ISO 222 uh, standard. Not to be confused with the year 2022 in which <laughs> it will go live. Now you're that's confusing a, things. That's a happy coincidence. <laughs> Um, but the key thing to remember is not the name of it. Mm. The key thing to remember about the ISO 222 standard is it enables extra data to be transported around with the payment message. Mm. So right now, if I send you a payment, Juliet, the money gets to you, but not much else. The ISO 222 standard enables a whole bunch of richer data to be transported with that payment message. And that supports future innovations such as smart invoicing, you know, oh. attaching invoicing uh, references uh, with the payment. There's going to be a lot of chatter at Cybos this week about a swift innovation called GPI, which is like a track and trace, mm. but for payments, the ISO 222 standard yep. supports that as well. So that's the first big benefit of the NPA. That's, that's richer data. The second is robustness and resilience, which we just talked about. Um, Faster Payments is now 11 years old. The Bax infrastructure has been around for a long time too. Technology moves on a lot in that time. It's the right time for a platform renewal mm. uh, to deliver the next generation of robust payments architecture. And the third is a more competitive, more open ecosystem that provides a benefit to end users. Pay.UK's mission is to support a vibrant UK economy through a, ro a robust, competitive and resilient payment system. The NPA will open up competition and innovation for additional providers to come in, the fintechs, the non-banks, yeah. alongside the banks, and offer more competition and more innovation to end users, but whilst maintaining robustness and resilience. So plenty of challenges for Pay.UK. So what's the one thing that's going to be key to Pay.UK's success? It's an unfair question, but I have to ask it. <laughs> so it, it's not unfair at all, Julia, actually, because that one thing is really clear. We're about providing services to the end user. We reach end users via our participants. We're regulated by stakeholders to protect you know, end users from the risks around this. So the key word, the key answer to this question is cooperation. We need to cooperate with our participants via our Participant Advisory Council, cooperate with our end users via our end user advisory council and cooperate very regularly with our regulators to ensure this is held together. 
So if we cooperate with our stakeholders, we'll be successful. I'm sure you will. Matthew Hunt, we'll have to leave it there, but thank you so much for joining us on Cybos TV. That was Matthew Hunt, who's the Chief Operating Officer at Pay.uk. Have a great Cybos. Thank you.